Dr. Rochford, a situation with uh, Australia at the moment, especially in New South Wales, I would say on the tail end of natural disasters, COVID-19 kicking on. The mental health of Australians really is suffering right now, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. We've known it's been a problem. Uh, it's been brewing and something that we need to address. And in 2020, I think the combination of everything that's occurred has just uncovered how big of a problem that we do have. Now, according to the uh, the statistics, one in five Aussies between 16 and 85 will have some kind of situation that they have to deal with. That's quite a high number, one in five, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And that was a number that was surveyed before COVID-19 hit. In some recent reports, they've found that up to 78% of people are saying that they've had uh, a decline in their mental health since the beginning of COVID-19. So those numbers are staggering. They're not surprising. And in the emergency department, we're seeing it. So for everyone in Australia, we need to be willing to ask for help, but we've got to be willing to help each other as well. And I think that's something that's become more and more prevalent as time has gone on, especially, I suppose, over the last 20 or so years, is that people have realised that the, you know, the body is a temple and so therefore physical fitness is one thing, but mental fitness is just as important. We have come forward in leaps and bounds when it comes to the understanding of mental health. I think for a very long time it wasn't well understood. But it's just the same as spraining your ankle. If you have a mental health issue that needs to be managed or treated, you need to see somebody that can help you with that. And I think that reduction in stigma and all of us starting to understand that it is something that people need confidence to ask for help, um, but supporting them when they need to do that, knowing that there is the ability for them to get better. Doctor, give us a, a bit of an idea about the Australian Government's Digital Health Agency, which I would say in this day and age, especially right now with social distancing and various things going on, is, uh, is an ideal vehicle or mechanism for people to use to look for help? The Australian Digital Health Agency has been around for a while, been involved in a lot of the initiatives around trying to drive forward a connected health system, implementing initiatives like the My Health Record, electronic prescriptions and, and telehealth. And in 2020, it's really been proven that it is something that is at the cornerstone of the future of our healthcare system. In a, in a time when more than ever, we need to be connected with our healthcare providers. The digital health agency is, is helping drive forward these initiatives, getting people to understand, educate and be more confident in using teleconsultation to connect with their doctor, uh, getting practitioners and pharmacists to start using technology like electronic prescription um, and, and getting to the point where we do have a healthcare system that harnesses both the face-to-face and the importance of the face-to-face consultation, but also the digital initiatives that help create a more efficient outcome for everybody. Now you've, kind of, you've touched on a subject there that, uh, that we do need to cover briefly, I suppose, before we finish things up. The number of people in Australia that aren't online is, is quite high. What do they actually uh, need to do, need to keep top of mind? What do people around them need to keep in mind if they need help and they're concerned about going online or they don't know how to? The research shows that if you harness digital healthcare, you get better outcomes. It also shows that if you use digital technology, especially during these times of, of, of restrictions and social distancing, the connectivity that occurs on a social level is also very important. So for those of us that feel comfortable, that are confident and literate when it comes to using the online world and digital health technology, we need to make sure we're proactive for those that don't necessarily feel so confident. Invariably, it's those that may not, may not have access, those that may be in an older generation, And I think for a lot of us, we need to recognise just how important it is to help them become comfortable, become confident, um, and give them the ability to access these wonderful resources online. It might not be for digital health. It might not be for teleconsultation. It might be for something just as simple as having a face-to-face video conferencing with their family. And we all know just how important that connectivity and feeling connected to our loved ones can be. So I think we all need to be more proactive about those people and making sure that they get to understand how important digital health can be.